I, I'm sure all three of you can do it. I think I'm not muted. I don't think I'm muted right now. Testing one, two, three, still on. Good morning, St. Luke's. Good just, 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 there we go. Good morning, St. Luke's. Well done. Good to see you all this morning. Everyone who's in person with us, welcome to St. Luke's United Methodist Church. Everyone who's online with us as well, welcome to St. Luke's Online Sanctuary. We're grateful to be able to worship with you today. I'm Mike Gillen, pastor here. At St. Luke's United Methodist Church, we've got a lot going on today. So we've got a lot of folks here to watch a baptism, but we decided instead of a baptism, we're going to have a preach-off. And so all of you need to start preparing your messages for the sermon you're going to give to not doing that. Instead, what we're going to do is we have some announcements. We want to make sure you're aware of what's going on in the life of the, this church in the next few days. Uh, first of all, as you've noticed who are with us in person, we've switched our Sunday worship time to 10 a.m., Sunday school and small group fellowship times have also switched, so we have adult and children's Sunday school classes meeting at 9 a.m., except for an adult group called STP and the youth group, which are meeting after worship, and so I hope you'll make note of those changes to our small group and Sunday school times. We're working on a pictorial directory. We're developing a new pictorial directory for the church. We have vol a volunteer photographer taking photos. We won't be selling pictures, so there is no pressure for you to expect to be asked to buy $5,000 worth of photographs for your family in the next week. So instead, it's just simply us setting up a couple of different times for you to come in and get a photograph that we'll put into a database and then use to create a church pictorial directory. Uh, the 12th, there's from 11 to 3, there's a chance to get a photograph. And then on the 14th, uh, from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. We also have another time. Please sign up in the church office or call the church office. We'll get you signed up. You could also just show up, right? I'm looking for Jean. Jean says yes. She, Jean Bailey's in charge of it. She said, yes, you can show up at one of those two times. We'll work you in. One of the big ministries we have here at St. Luke's is our free community Thanksgiving dinner on Thanksgiving Day. A couple of detailed announcements. You want me to do this first, don't you? I'm looking at Cindy, who's in charge of things, and she says, nope. Go back to this other announcement first. We have an ecumenical Thanksgiving worship service this Sunday, this next Sunday, so the 19th at 7 p.m. We've been invited to be part of an ecumenical Thanksgiving worship service at St. Thomas Holy Spirit Lutheran Church 
We're also going to be joining with a number of other churches. I think there'll be five other churches with us that day, four or five others. Our handbell choir will join with St. Thomas Holy Spirit Lutheran Church with their handbell choir, so that'll be great. Um, we're also collecting canned foods for a canned food drive, so if you want to during the week, bring some canned food to the church or next Sunday, and we'll take that collection of canned foods to St. Thomas Holy Spirit for the evening service. Oh, and by the way, you're going to recognize the preacher for this service this uh, next Sunday evening because it'll be me. <laughs> funny, funny little aside, I asked the pastor of St. Thomas Holy Spirit how long to prepare to preach, and so she said, usually I just say, preach until you're done, and let the Spirit work, and the word proclaimed. Then she said, but that doesn't help because it's a pretty full service, and so she said, how about a normal time for a, a, a normal sermon time? And then she put 12 minutes. I'm like, 12 minutes? <laughs> you all need to get ready because I've got like an hour of material. So, no. 12 is, so, in, so it'll be 12 minutes. We'll also serve communion. It should be a really great service. Hope you'll put this on your calendar for next Sunday at 7 p.m., this ecumenical service at St. Thomas Holy Spirit Church. All right. The last announcements that I try to get to too quickly. We have a free community Thanksgiving dinner every year here on Thanksgiving Day at, uh, at um, St. Luke's United Methodist Church. We need a couple of things. First, we need volunteers. If you have not yet signed up to be part of this, and you can, we hope you will, contact the church office. Uh, also, our Thursday email that we send out each Thursday has a link to uh, a way you can sign up online, but we're looking for volunteers. Please let us know that you can volunteer. Also, we need donations. So it says, my, my script says, we also need donations of turkeys. You'd think I'd be enough, but I'm not. Turkey. <laughs> that was my dad joke for the week. I'm done. I dropped the mic on that one. So we need turkeys. We need pies. Monetary donations also would really be a, bi a big benefit. Um, the turkeys, if you bring a turkey that is frozen, please drop it off by Friday, November 17th. If you brought a thawed or partially thawed turkey, please drop it off by next Sunday, the 19th. We'll also need pumpkin pies, apple pies, pecan pies, and sugar-free pies. So we're looking for your help with all of that. Last year, we had 200 people attend the Thanksgiving dinner. This year, we've been advertising. So we've been giving out advertisements to our community through different ways, including door hangers in the immediate neighborhoods around us, also using our connections to Forder Elementary School and Feed My People to get the word out. So we could have more than 200 this year. Hope you'll be here to help us and to donate as well. All right, a lot happening in the seven-day week church, isn't it? Well, you're here today to worship because God has called us here. I think about how God's brought us together because there's something in this sacred time that we can't find anywhere else. I cannot wait to find out what God has for us today. Let's worship together.
One of the exciting things about being a pastor is getting a chance to, to baptize someone. And, and I forgot to mention, we have a baptism in just a little bit. I'm very excited about this baptism. My first baptism here at St. Luke's, which is really exciting. And the one being baptized has already criticized me once, which is great. <laughs> so I believe the grandmother said, you need to hurry up. As um, Nathan, who's getting baptized, had a few things to say. So, uh, we'll take our time and get this right, but we'll make sure he's happy too. So, as we gather for prayer, I want to let you know, first, I'm excited about the chance to be able to participate with you and celebrate this holy baptism. It's a, a great thing to be thankful for. I'm also asking you to pray for folks that we know need your care, the family of Kathy or grieving Kathy's loss, praying for Renee, who has a significant illness and We're praying for her during this very difficult time for her and her family. Also praying for our executive assistant, Maya, who had surgery a week ago, and she'll be back in the office this Wednesday. She's recovering well, and want to let Maya know we're praying for you as well. I know you've also brought with you joys and concerns that really matter to you. Let me invite you to take a moment for just a brief moment of silent prayer, talk with God about what matters most to you, then I'll lead us in a prayer and the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray together. Our God, we are grateful for the ways you bring us together, for the work you do in our lives to care for us, inspire us to faith, lead us to serve you and others. We're excited to be able to celebrate the birth of a new child and a birth of a new child into uh, your church as we Uh, offer holy baptism again and celebrate that baptism. We're thankful for Nathan and for the Thoreau family. God, we also pray that you'd hear our prayers for those we're concerned about today, for the family of Kathy, for Renee, and for Maya, each needing something unique and different from you, God. We're grateful that you will be involved in their lives to heal, to comfort, to walk them through difficulty. Now, God, remind us of what it means to be your people. Teach us to pray as we remember your son's prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As you're able, please rise once again as we lift our voices in praise. Let 
letting go of every single dream. I lay each one down at your feet. Every moment of my wandering never changes what you see. I've tried to win this war, I confess. My hands are weary, I need your rest. Mighty warrior, king of the fight, no matter what I face, you're by my side. When you're on the, the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers, as I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. Truth is you know what tomorrow brings. There's not a day ahead you have not seen. So in all things be my life and bread. I want what you want, Lord, and nothing less. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers, as I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. You are my strength and comfort. You are my steady hand. You are my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. Your ways are always higher, your plans are always good. There's not a place where I'll go, you've not already stood. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through when you don't give the answers as I cry out to you. I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Sing that out. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Finally, the Apostles' Creed, a statement of faith that binds us together. Let's join together in our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Please be seated. It's a, a privilege and an opportunity each week to support the ministry of this church through our financial gifts. This morning, Jesus reminds us it's better to give than to receive. As our ushers come forward to receive our morning offering, whether you're in person or online, I encourage you to be generous as Christ is generous to you.
choir. That was great, by the way. You know, Tommy did a great job with them today. This music's been wonderful this morning, by the way. Thank you to all of you who are leading in the worship, uh, the praise team, the behind the scenes folks, by the way. I appreciate here's working with us as well, doing a great job of keeping things squared away as well. I really appreciate y'all. Our scripture reading for this morning is from Psalm 70. I've invited Katie Abishan, one of our youth, to come and lead the scripture. By the way, just to our our media booth is aware of this, Katie's going to be preaching, for, or preaching, reading scripture from the pulpit. She could preach if she wanted to, but Katie, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Our scripture reading today is from Psalm 70, 1 through 5. <clears throat> God, please hurry to my rescue. God, come quickly to my side. Those who are out to get me, let them fall over themselves. Those who relish my downfall, send them down a blind valley. Give them a taste of their own medicine. Those gossips off clucking their tongues. Let those who hunt for you sing and celebrate. Let all who love your saving way say over and over, God is mighty. But I've lost it. I'm wasted. God, quickly, quickly, quick to my side, quick to my rescue. God, don't lose a minute. Holy God, holy word. Thanks be to God. Katie, great job today. Thank you for leading us in the scripture reading. Uh, Katie's the first of many who will uh, be, be invited to be involved in worship leadership, so I'll ask other youth and other adults over time. Hope you'll let me know if you're interested in reading the scriptures, saying a prayer, leading the affirmation of faith. There are lots of different ways you can be involved in, in worship. By the way, I was going to just look at scripture for a minute. You know, this uh, Psalm 70, I want to encourage you to consider it to be your, your scripture for the week. Your, your meditation. I was talking with a friend about this Psalm 70 and how, you know, sometimes the scripture just speaks exactly what we need to hear in the moment. Maybe right now for you, you need to be saying to God, God, please hurry to my rescue. God, come quickly to my side. Maybe you've been having some difficulty with some folks and you need to say to God, God, those who relish my downfall, send them down a blind alley. Isn't that a great line? Or how about this one? Give them a taste of their own medicine, those gossips off clucking their tongues. I thought that was great the way you read that. But I, I love that imagery. Um, and then, as you heard Katie just say, uh, I've lost it, God. I'm wasted away. Come quickly. Maybe this week you need to hear these words each day as you spend a moment reading the Scripture and speaking to God. Well, in any case, our... Uh, message series for this month is titled Thankful. Each week I'm looking at the ways Christ's way inspires thankful living. In other words, what I'm suggesting each week is that following after Jesus Christ, allowing faith in God to be a part of our lives and and letting the Spirit of God lead us should lead us to a way where we are thankful each day in how we live. Today I want to talk about a very simple idea, the idea of help. Uh, I remember when my son was just a little over a year old, could barely talk, but could run around. He and my dad and I, we went to a a park not far from the house I grew up in, and there was this kind of slide that you could, you know, just one of these twisting slides. It was not a very tall one. For some reason, my little boy decided he was going to go up the slide instead of go up the stairs and down the slide. So as he got up the slide, he got to a certain part, and he kind of got stuck, and his feet were going like this, and he could barely talk, but he went... Do, 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 help, and uh, <laughs> I've always thought about how there are times when we're like just, you know, we're about to lose it, and it's time to cry out to God and say, help. Reliance on God is at the heart of faith, so today we're called to give thanks. Let me ask you this. Have you ever realized you received help from God? Have you ever realized you received help from God? Like maybe you're driving along, and you get a flat tire, and you realize you don't know how to change the tire, but someone just pops along and comes there to help you. I remember once before Mrs. Gillen was Mrs. Gillen, she had a flat tire, and, and uh, she knows how to change a tire, by the way, just as well as I do, maybe better even, but she had a trucker, as I recall, help her to change her tire. As she told me, I was like, oh my gosh, a truck driver, I mean, a stranger helping you? Sometimes you get help, don't you? I remember when I was a little boy and my mom had a flat tire out on 
in, on 470 in, in Kansas City, and uh, a couple of guys stopped to help us change our tires. I was just a little bitty boy, and it was a really hot day. Sometimes we find so, uh, someone is, is the embodiment of God there to help us. Maybe during this time of year, you got a lot going on in your yard, and you'd like to get a little help from a friend, right? Isn't it great when you have someone surprise you to help you with your yard work? Sometimes someone just helping us clear the leaves from our yard, they're God embodied. Maybe you're that person this week for someone else. You can be the help for someone. Have you ever been really sick or just really down and things are not going well for you? And someone surprises you by sending you a meal or maybe ice cream. Who who knows what you get, right? By the way, if I were ever sick and you're worried about me, if you want to door dash some Baskin Robbins daiquiri ice to me, oh man, I'm okay. Boy, that was that was it. That was shame, shameless, wasn't it? Mrs. Gillen just said that was shameless. <laughs> shameless. Sometimes, sometimes help comes from someone who lifts us up by just offering a meal. Maybe you've been in school and you've had some trouble with a class, and you ask a friend for help, and they help you. You know, I remember in college, people would ask me, hey, or, or graduate school, hey, could you help me with some notes? I missed the class. So they look at my notes, and the first thing they say is, who taught you to write? The handwriting is awful. And I said, they, a lot of people tried. And then they looked at my notes and said, this is not helpful. So I had to talk them through what I remembered. Have you ever helped someone in class or in a, in a kind of situation where they just missed something and you're trying to help them figure it out? We find help in lots of different ways. Probably in a worship service, we think about how in worship, we call out to God and we seek God's help, you know, looking for it and then discovering it in the experience of worship. Is it possible today that you may need to say to God, God, help me, and you'll have some experience in this sacred time where you realize God is helping you? What I'm suggesting today is this, that relying on God can be calling out to God for help. That when it comes to what it means to be designed, built, created, born to rely on God, in many ways it means calling out to God for help. Again, the psalm says to us this morning, God, please hurry to my rescue. God, come quickly to my side. Sometimes the psalms express the emotions that are most deeply felt by us. Relying on God is also seeing where God helps us and thanking God for that help. There is a response that's part of this reliance relationship we have with God. This morning, we have a terrific opportunity to see God at work in us. The sacrament of baptism emphasizes we can rely on God's grace. It symbolizes the covenant God makes with all who place faith in Jesus Christ. This covenant is a crucial kind of idea. It means God says to us, I am going to offer to all who wish to receive it an eternal gift of grace that leads to eternal life, a covenant I'll never break with you. This is what the sacrament of baptism emphasizes, expresses, and makes real to us. Through baptism, we are initiated into Christ's church. So this is an act of initiation. Christians do, and that this church does as well. We offer and realize there is forgiveness of sin by God in the activity of being baptized. And we're taught of the new life of faith in the Holy Spirit as we are washed into a new life in Jesus Christ. There's a lot that baptism seeks to express to us. United Methodists, we're a United Methodist Church, United Methodists baptize people at any age. Did you know this? We will baptize people who are infants. You'll see that in a minute. Emphasizing that God's grace raise, is called to raise us into faith. And so we, we begin at the beginning with folks, offering this sacrament that God offers to all in the church. We oftentimes will baptize young people who haven't been baptized before at confirmation. In fact, I have a lot of uh, church members I've known over the years as a Methodist pastor who say they were baptized at 13 when they were confirmed. Uh, Back in the 40s and 50s in this region, sometimes first confirmation confirmation and first communion and baptism were all combined. 
also, Methodists baptize adults. When adults, and that's anyone, you know, over 10, even young people who profess faith for the first time in Jesus Christ. I find this third idea that we will baptize people who have never been baptized before who are adults, I find that to be groundbreaking for many people who come to church. Uh, This year, at a different church before I was appointed here, I baptized a couple of people over 70, one of whom came forward after she saw the other one baptized and said, I didn't realize adults could get baptized. Here's a story I heard once. I heard this story, and I, I baptized this person this year. A man said to me when he was nine, he was going to a Baptist church. Several kids went forward to be baptized. He was told by the elders of the church he wasn't ready to be baptized yet. It hurt him deeply. The next year, they came to him and said, you can be baptized now. And he said, no, thanks. He was 10. He grew up to be the captain of the football team, the quarterback, the star quarterback, went on to a successful career, a long marriage. His wife died. He married a second wife who was his high school sweetheart, whose husband had also died a couple years before. They've been married over 20 years. This year, he came to me and said, I'm in my 80s. I've never been baptized, and I'm ready. So I baptized him. Then the next week, someone came up to me and said, I'm 75, and I thought I missed my chance when I was a teenager. I said, nope, I'll baptize you right now. Well, it wasn't quite that quick, but, you know. (laughs) Maybe you're here today, or you're online with me right now. You're an adult. And for whatever reason, you thought you missed your chance to get baptized. We understand as United Methodists, as followers of Christ, that the first language of the church is the language of conversion, going from not following Christ to following Christ. And a reflection of that conversion is receiving the sacrament of of holy baptism. So if you have not been baptized as an adult, you've never been baptized before, you're an adult and you're thinking, well, I'm too old, you're not. Hope you'll speak to me this week. Even after the service today, reach out to me. Baptism symbolizes the eternal covenant made by God with all who receive Christ's baptism. It's important to understand this. This is a kind of sign act. It's a symbol, but it's also a a, a window into reality that God makes an eternal covenant that God won't break once we receive it. So, because of that, United Methodists don't rebaptize because we trust God's steadfast love God's faithful covenant with us is eternal. In other faith traditions, if you're not baptized the right way, or you don't think it took, or someone else doesn't think it took, you get baptized a lot. We have folks from other church traditions, other denominations, Protestant, Catholic, Orthodox, who come to the United Methodist Church having already been baptized, and ask, can we be a member of the church if we don't get baptized again? And I say, you're not going to get baptized again. That baptism counted. We actually think those churches are actual churches of Jesus Christ too. They're not just playing around. And so that baptism counts. We don't rebaptize. What we do is at different stages in life, a person realizes their faith has taken another step. They've matured. They've returned to God or or they realize their faith means more to them for some reason at that stage of life they're in. And so we renew baptismal vows. Not the same thing as being baptized again. Someone says again, I repeat those vows. In fact, our founding Methodist, John Wesley, used to have a renewal of baptismal vows at the beginning of each year in some of the churches he pastored. It used to be a tradition of Methodists. Maybe we might do that this year here at St. Luke's, begin the year off in our first worship service with all of us who have been baptized, renewing our baptismal vows. In any case, through the leadership of the Holy Spirit, the church helps those who are baptized into a mature faith relationship. The idea is when you say yes to God, it's, it's the first day of saying yes to God, and every day after is a chance to grow in faith, to mature, to again every day choose to say yes to God. The celebration of baptism is a way for the church to express thanks to God for the saving grace found in Christ's way. We say thank you to God. Again, the scripture for us this morning says, let all who love your saving way say over and over, God is mighty. By the way, this is what I want us at St. Luke's to hear God say to us today. God has never done with us yet. God is mighty and works through God's people. 
So the church responds at baptisms by saying, we give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. We'll get to do that in just a minute in the baptismal uh, liturgy, and I'll lead us in that. So here's the bottom line. You are created to rely on God. This is how it is. You can trust that God will help you, so you can give thanks. This is what it means to rely on God, to see that as we rely on God, God helps us, leads us to a next step of life and faith, and we respond by saying, thank you, God. So what do we do with this lesson this week? What do we do with it, right? There's a chance for us to live better by faith this week if we respond. Let me suggest to you, first of all, maybe this question is a question for you. Do you need God's help today? Is that where you are? Call out to God. Say exactly what's going on to God in your prayers. Talk to God like you would talk to another person in the room with you, because God is with you. And then give thanks, because God's listening to you. And then look for where God will help you. If you need help today, this is what I'm suggesting you begin doing this week. Maybe uh, this question's for you. Do you have someone in your family who needs to be baptized? Someone who is not able to speak for themselves? because they're not an adult yet. Speak to me about how we can get that person baptized. You'll get to see one today, so you know it's going to happen. Although next week, or the next baptism, I'm hoping that there'll be water wings and goggles involved, but I couldn't convince Nathan to do that for me today. Maybe you have someone in your family who can speak for themselves, but you want me to be praying with you that they will respond and seek baptism. Speak to me this week. Speak to me today. Or... Maybe I need to talk to you right now, if you're in this room or on the, in the online sanctuary with us. Do you need to be baptized? If you haven't been baptized before, and you've been afraid, frightened to say, to say yes to God, talk to me. We'll work it out. We'll figure out how to get you baptized in a way that helps you take that next step of faith. Maybe you need to renew your baptismal vows because God's been working in you, and you need to express it. There is nothing more powerful in a church than to see a baptism or a renewal of baptismal vows when a, a young person or adult of any age says, I don't know what happened, but somehow God has sh is showing up in my life, and I want to thank God by making a statement. Speak to me. This is what you do with this lesson. Speak to me, and then we'll together come to the church, and the church will rally around you in this next step of faith thankful. We are called to be people who give thanks as we learn to turn to God and call out for help. Will you pray with me? God, lead us to you today to understand where you'd have us go, who you'd have us be. God, who is it that right now needs your help? Prompt them, God, to call out to you today and tomorrow and the next day. And look for your help. God, who is it here? Who is it worshiping with us who needs to be baptized or has a family member that needs to be baptized? God, inspire them to take that next step to receive this holy sacrament. God, we thank you for the baptism we're about to see and be a part of. Bless this time in Christ's name. Amen. All right, so this is the first baptism for me with the. Uh, and the Thoreau family is going to make it happen. So let me invite David and Beth Thoreau to join me up here with their uh, with the grandparents and the, the godparents or whoever else you want to have join here. I, you bring whoever you want to come on up here with us. By the way, St. Luke's folks, there will be on the screens everything I'm going to say so that you'll know what's going on. I'm going to have you all stand right over here. We'll have Nathan and Beth right here, David next to them. I've got... Uh, booklets for you. You can also look on the screen right there. By the way, there he is. That's not a bad looking kid, is it? No. You make good babies, by the way. Well done. Uh, I don't know who else would like to have. We've got extra copies here. We'll, uh, if you'll just pass them out for me, that'd be great. I'm going to stand right here, John. I'm going to stand right there. This is, the, fa this is the, the grandpa, right? Grandmother, you said, hurry up. All right. We've got quite a crew here today. 
So what will happen is this. There'll be parts where I will speak. And there'll be parts where I'll invite uh, the parents and grandparents, sponsors to speak. And then there'll be parts where the congregation speaks. And I will actually lead you. I'll be speaking with you so that online they can hear what's going on. So throughout the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church, incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation. As such, baptism is an expression of God's grace, grace offered to us without price. So let me ask you, Beth and David. Yeah, this is working out great, by the way. Well done. I wasn't going to hold him because I didn't want him to, but if he's going to sleep the whole time, you'll never know. Okay, you'll hold him anyway. So we have uh, the vows are, are in the form of uh, questions that the parents and the sponsors respond to, so all who are involved in this, you can respond with with Beth and with David. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression? I do. Amen. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord? I do. Amen. Will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example he will be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. Amen. Amen. Child number three. Um, church, I need you to respond. Do you as Christ's body of the church reaffirm both the rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. The central symbol of baptism is water. Water has a rich history and meaning in Scripture. I could preach a whole sermon on it, but I'm just simply going to say we discover we were born by water and reborn in the Spirit as well. Let me offer a prayer to bless this, this water before us. Eternal God, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and this one who will receive it to wash away his tendency to sin, to clothe him in righteousness throughout his life, that dying and being raised with Christ, he may live and share in Christ's final victory. Amen. What is the name given to this child? Nathan Oliver Thoreau. Nathan Oliver Thoreau. And by the way, you're doing a great job with him, too. He's the most well-behaved baby we've had here all day today. <laughs> yeah, isn't that wonderful? Well, Nathan Oliver, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit work within you, Nathan, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Church, let's respond together. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your care, love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members of the body of Christ and this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Now may the God of all grace, who called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen.
What do you say, church? This is where we, yeah, there we go. I'm sorry, I'm reaching past you. This is the most inelegant way for me to do this, isn't it? So we've got lots of gifts for them, though. That's what I've got. So, David, I'm going to have you. So we've got a couple, a quilt and a blanket, a baptism certificate, and a, a card celebrating with you. That card is from the United Women of Faith who have created the blankets and the quilt, and we say... Congratulations. Welcome, Nathan Oliver, and what a joy to be able to celebrate this new life in Christ. Uh, once again, let's say thank you, God, for all you're doing. All right, I think we got it. By the way, I know there's a lot to that baptismal reading that we just did. I hope you'll get used to it, all right? Maybe go home and practice it, because I expect to be doing a lot of baptisms over the time I'm here with you. Uh, isn't it nice? Great thing to be able to celebrate together. Bruce, I understand. I was told that there might be another song to sing today. There might be. I'm not going to promise. Anything. Let's do it. <laughs> As you're... For a microphone. There we go. Let us leave this place today rejoicing in the baptism that we have just witnessed. And let us carry that message of Christ and his love to everyone that we meet this next week. We're going to start once again. We're going to start one more time. Okay. I think we're all ready. One, two, ready. Whoa, 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 whoa. Everybody has trials and temptations. Everybody knows heartbreak, isolation. But we can lay our burdens down. Lay our burdens down. What a friend we have in Jesus. East to west, my sins are gone. I see grace on every horizon. And forever and ever, his heart is my home. Everybody has fears, everybody has worries, everybody knows sorrow, devastation, but we can lay our burden down, lay our burden down. What a friend we have in Jesus, east to west my sins are gone. I see grace on every horizon, and forever and ever his home is my home. No more betrayal, for he is faithful. He fills me up and my cup runneth over. No more betrayal, for he is faithful. How he has proven it over and over. No And my cup runneth over No more betrayal For he is faithful How he has proven it Over and over Over and over What a friend we have in Jesus East to west my sins are gone I see grace on every horizon And forever and ever His heart is my home what a friend we have in Jesus, east to west my sins are gone. I see grace on every horizon, and forever and ever his heart is my home. Forever and ever his heart is my home.
Everybody have a great week. Next week, hand clapping class starts at 9.30 before the worship service. Have a great week.